Hello, y'all on YouTube. This is Rob with Rob's Nerdy Knives. Today I have a very special quick skiffs swap out and maybe a light uh, tuning of the detent for this front flipper. This is my new Bravo. Uh, uh, it's X-Series by Enrique Pena. This is the frag pattern one that I just ordered directly from Enrique Pena. Very cool flat ground blade. It's kind of reverse Tonto, modified, Warren Cliff, Sheep's Foot, whatever you want to call it. And it's not really Sheep's Foot. There's no really bow to the belt. Is it, um, well, maybe, is it, is, it, is it flat at all? It's got a slight curve to the belly. So I guess, you know, you could call it modified, one of those three things. Really, really nice, but it is a front flipper. The front flipper works pretty well, but it's a little tight and it's perfect for a thumb stud. So if you like a strong detent for your thumb studs and you don't mind that for your front flipper, don't, don't tune it, leave it as is. And you could just do the uh, skiff swap, uh, swap the skiff bearings like I'm about to do. But if you like to utilize that front flipper and be able to do like a, a finger flip like that, which I like to do, this is very aggressive jimping um, for the, the tuning of the detent. You can either soften that jimping and that make it maybe make it a little easier or you can tune the detent because i would like for that not to be as aggressive and this is going to be a very very minor tuning of the of that so we're going to take this apart one more unique thing i already discovered is those screws are t8 uh, t9s these are t9s on the body screws a t8 was way too small and a t10 did not fit in there so we're going to take that apart probably speed up a lot of this video as we go through and we'll talk as we as we get there but first let's take this apart and take a look all right So this is the pivot screw real quick, jump in there. This, this, this is the T8, just so you know. So I needed a different screwdriver for this one. Pretty standard for Riot, just in case you didn't know. What's going on here? Is this not a captive pivot? Hmm. All right. I may get a different screw. Oh, it's right here. All right, that's interesting. I may have to stand up and push down on this to see if I can get a little leverage. I don't know if the pivot is captive. I may need something rubber to hold that down. That is not captive at all. Wow. All right. Not a big fan of that at the slightest. I got to tell you, that's really uncool. Really, really uncool. Wish that was not the case. That's a real bummer. I, that probably saved some of the cost, for sure, because captive pivots do add to cost. But man, wow. That was a bummer. All right, so just something to keep in mind for you guys, you know, captive pivots and stuff that does add to the difficulty of getting a knife apart. So what I did is I leveraged the angle to get a little friction on the washer here, and you probably end up seeing, yeah, so you see a little wear on the outside there? I don't know if you can see that. That's from me angling it to get the pressure on it so that I could actually get enough resistance to unscrew the pivot. So I don't know what I'm going to do to get around that if I ever need to take this knife apart again to clean. So let's see here. We had the screw probably end up doing, there's no, there's no captive on here. There's nothing that says this is a captive pivot whatsoever. It's one big piece. So I'm just cleaning this right now. I'm looking for Something on here. Oh, dirt there. Let's see. Does have some Loctite in there. We'll clean that out. But uh, 
I don't see anything that would tell me that. Okay, so what I'll end up doing, this is the side that came with the screw. This is the side that came with the pivot because it's at the most resistance. I'll probably end up, and it's going to sound crazy, but I'm going to end up putting a little bit of Loctite in the back of this because that's going to give it some friction and a little bit of Loctite in here because that will allow that to have some pressure so that this screw will be able to overcome these threads. So let me get my cleaning stuff because we're going to clean that out really well. We don't want that to have super crazy bad resistance again. So I'll need some, some of my alcohol and my KPL little, what do we call these, ultra micro um, swabs. So just isopropyl alcohol, 91%, you know, best you can get at the grocery store, that works. And a couple of these cleaners here. So let's clean that screw out first. All right, so I want to make sure. Get some of that liquid in there. Dissolve the, the Loctite. Get it off the threads. I really want it off the threads. That's where I want it off. So let's, let's clean that off really well. All right. Let me make sure, let me make sure the screw goes in really well. Okay. It's a little, a little hard to get in. I don't know if I got some dirt on there. Let's, let's figure that out. I want to put a little more cleaning solution in there. That's the screw dirty. Get a little alcohol on my cloth here. Make sure it's not anything on there. That screw sure is having a hard time getting through there. Make sure there's no dirt on there. Okay. Let's go back to this pivot. Seems to hit a spot right around there. I'm going to get a little more clean solution in there. You know what we're gonna do? Let's leave the liquid in there this time, and then we'll screw. We'll pivot it. I think there's a little fly flying around in here. If you see that, I think it's from outside. All right, that seems to clean it up a little bit. Trying to see if there's anything else in there. So I want to make sure this is as clean as I possibly can get it because I want to be able to not have it get stuck. So if I need to clean this again, I can. And what I'm doing is I'm threading this screw in because there's stuff on the threads on the inside. Um, initially, I couldn't screw it but that far. And now I can get it all the way in and all the way out. I mean, there's still stuff on there, but it's it's threading. Before it was like literally just stuck. And I feel like this is cleaning it up. So this gives me a better chance at uh, getting a good contact and good connection. Okay, so we've got that cleaned up. That's that's what that was unexpected. Non-captive pivot. I think I have an idea of what I'm going to do to kind of lock in place. I am going to tune this ever ever so slightly. So if you can see this right here, it is just ever so slightly there. So we're going to drop that back a little bit. But in order to do that, I have to get rid of the over travel stop. So I have to unscrew this. Wow, that's in there so solid. My goodness. Whew. You're talking about a really solid thing in there. Now it's good. This one's coming out pretty good. It's nice. So this, this should be pretty easy to remove. There we go. All right. And there's a little detent ball. All right, so we're going to do it ever so slightly. I'm looking for, and sometimes to, to gauge this, if you're curious, I will do this. I will measure this. Okay, so this tells me I've got yay, so much room there between the blades. So I want to, I want to go too far back. Okay, 
All right, so I'm going to go back over here. Yeah, and I think that's enough. That's it. That's all I need to do. Don't want to do a whole lot. I can always come back and do it again. All right? It's better to, to um, have to adjust it later on than it is to overdo it. That's my opinion of that one. So we're not going to put any Loctite on any of these guys because I don't think this needs it. It's in there so solidly. All right, so that's back in nicely. Okay, very good. All right. So I'm going to have this part right here probably like that. Okay. So let's do that real quick. Oh, I didn't take this off. Hold on. Let's clean these washers. I don't know if I did that. Now I'm going to see what washers I need. I think I, ha I have some that, that should fit this. And they look like they're the 5 millimeter probably. That's what I'm going to guess. They don't look like the 3 8 but I could be wrong. So I've got one of these. You can get one of these from Skiffs directly. Let's see. <laughs> okay, it's 5 millimeter. Oh, no, it's 3 16 so, Okay, so this is the 3 16 It's 3 16 and 5 is real close. So I think... These are the 3 sixteenths. Let's double check. 3 sixteenths, yeah. All right, and I'll check the thickness on the, on the ones. Okay, so it's not 3 sixty-fourth, it's 1 sixteenth, and that's what these are. So let's measure them up. Yeah, these look like the ones. So these are the old ones right here. We'll put those over here. Notice these are open on this side. Skiffs are closed on both sides, so you can see that. They are on both sides, in here and here. They're sealed, caged ceramic ball bearings, so it's really nice. Now I'm gonna put this back on here, and one side will have a track and one will not. So I'm gonna look for the one that's without a track already. So I'll put that one in there, like that. And then I'm gonna put the, 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 uh, The pivot collar back there. But remember, I said I was going to use a little bit of this Loctite. I'm thinking this might work if I use a very small amount. And I might use my cotton swab for this, because this, this would be probably a good way to apply this, I think, in this case. So where's my pivot collar? There it is. So I'm going to put a little bit on the back. You see what I'm doing? This is gonna this is gonna hopefully will when I tighten it up, it's gonna lock in there really well to keep it in place. And we're gonna take this over here, and I'm gonna put a little bit of that on the back here like this. I'm gonna wipe all the excess off over here. I'm gonna put this over here, the one without. Like that. I'm hoping that'll help keep it in place. We'll put a little bit of oil. Now, in this case, I'm going to be very careful with my oil. I want just a small drop. I can put a little drop over here. Now, this is going to be the detent side, so I will put a little drop inside the detent hole and a little drop right there on the detent ball. All right, so that's the lock bar to catch it. And we're gonna do just a little drop here. I think that's backwards. That's unfortunate. Yeah. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Before I put any sort of detent stuff ah, on there, I'm going to just put this on first. I want to be able to take this off. <laughs> oh, there's some stuff on, on the, the screw. Do I have my toothpick over here? I have a toothpick I usually 
Ooh, almost lost the screw. Don't, don't fall. There we go. I just don't want to add any garbage to the to the uh, to the threads or anything like that as it goes in, right? All right, so let's put some of these screws on. I'm gonna have to get some T9 bits for this knife now. I did this backwards. Oh well. Is it still centered? Yeah. <sighs> well, maybe when I have to clean it again or adjust it, I'll fix that. All right, so real quick, in, um, okay, so real quick, this is a interruption to the video. I inserted this just to show you that I went ahead and swapped out the, the pivot, so now it's on the show side. There's no, there's no screw in, on the right side that there is a screw where I wanted to have it, and it's now dead nut centered, and the action is just beautiful just beautifully shut and I can flip it with my finger like I want to which is really what I'm looking for and that's what's important to me so whatever's important to you you tune it to the way you want it if you don't ever use that or if you've got gigantic calluses on your knuckles and you could probably you know shave down you know um, a file with your knuckle then great I can't so <laughs> I needed something a little a little more uh, wouldn't destroy my knuckle when I can use it but this is perfect for what I want it but I did swap this out, and I didn't want you guys to see that. It's the same thing what we just went through. Took it apart, put it back together again. But here you go. Looks really nice, and it's exactly what I wanted as. And the action is really nice with the skiffs washers in there. All right. This is too much effort right now to reverse that. If I do, you're not going to see me do it. I'll do it after I finish. But I totally got flustered by the pivot not coming out. I mean, just threw me off my game on this one. This was a unique one, I will say that much. So hopefully you guys learned something from this one. The T9 screws is really big. And then the, uh, let's see how's the action now? Good. All right, is it centered still? Might be off a little bit. We may be taking it apart just to switch this because sometimes that's that can cause some of the, uh, the, uh, not being centered. Typically I'd want that on this side here where I think it should be. But see it's off to the left just a little bit but and then all I do is put the put this back on and then we're good to go. And that's it. That's going to be it for for this particular uh, skiff sw swapping. I will tell you that I do like this is much smoother so I'll show you what I mean, because now I can do my, my finger flip, see? I like to be able to have my finger here, and, and oops, it's hard to do without the clip. Let's try to do this without the clip. Um, I like to be able to have my finger here, be able to do that. That to me is really nice, you know, and you can do it left-handed too, so that's nice. And it was just a little, just a hair too tight for that. No, no collar rock, no collar uh, pivot, ah, no blade rock. <laughs> and. Uh, Going in and out smoothly, action is really nice. Beautifully, it's gonna break in really nice. So I like that. So that's my quick skiff swap and tuning on this particular knife. We'll finish this up. I'm gonna, I don't wanna show you the rest, but I'm gonna sw switch sides on this. Uh, but I wanted to kind of just go through what it was. These are the the washers that you'll need right here. The Rocket Glide 316th, 116th, 11 count, 0 0.189, 0.370, and 0 0.050. Remember, use my RNK10 code for 10% off at Skiffs, and I'll have a link down below uh, in the description. So make sure you check that out. Get 10% off when you make an order from them using RNK10. Um, partner with Skiffs and definitely recommend their washers. It makes a world of difference in some knives. And some knives, it's just beautiful. It just makes a knife just a little bit better. I've only had two knives where it didn't make a difference, and that was rare. So I'll just tell you that when I switched out Skiffs, it was only two knives that didn't make a difference. It felt exactly the same. And I think over time, there was one knife that felt no different when I first did it. Then after a while, it got gritty and dirty, and I cleaned it up, and it wasn't quite the same. And then when I put Skiffs in, it was beautiful. So even then, it would have been three, but it was down to two because eventually, Skiffs still made a difference. And it probably will be true for just about any knife. But there you go. Hey, if you guys have any questions about this, if you found this content fun, 
interesting, inf worthwhile, entertaining, or informative, would you please consider hitting the like button down below? And if you've already hit that like button, would you please consider hitting the subscribe button? Subscribing and liking the videos really helps out the channel, helps me produce more content, do more things, and ultimately more things for you guys. So thank you very much for that. And if you've already done that, maybe consider hitting the notification button so you can be notified of future content. And if you've done all that, hey, go check me out over on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Again, that's on Instagram at robs underscore nerdy underscore knives. Thanks so much for watching today. Have a great day and a great week. Bye.